I want to introduce a young man that I met about 30 years ago, uh, Gene McGuire. I won't tell anything about you, Gene, though I know a lot about you. The only thing I will say is on your way up here to take this microphone is that Gene McGuire has been my son for a long time, my dearly beloved son in whom I am tickled pink. And I know that won't translate well. But he lives in this area now. We are so blessed to have him. Amen. Is that microphone more anointed? I want that one. This is the one I spit on most. Is it? <laughs> you keep that one. I want to just really just say thank you to Larry and Debbie for their faithfulness. I don't know if there's many more in this room that could understand the, the weight of their consistent love and faithfulness in a person's life. Mark, you're ahead of me, but I'm, I trail close behind you. And I just want to say thank you to Larry and Debbie because they've been so faithful. And this is the result. The nations, the nations are here tonight because of your prayers, because of your faithfulness. So, Praise God. You know, it was a few weeks ago, Larry called me and said, uh, hey, I want you to um, come and speak and share some of your testimony. Take about 20 minutes and share some of your testimony. And also, I want you to promote your new book. And so I wrote a book, and it's called Unshackled, and it should be released real soon. And, and uh, so I, I thought... Wow, you know, 20 minutes in front of world leaders, who gets that except a son? And it's just a real privilege. And I thought, on the other hand, after I got off the phone, I said, how am I going to share 34 years, 9 months, and 15 days of my incarceration in a state prison in Pennsylvania for a murder that my cousin committed while we were out drinking and playing some pool. And I thought there's really no way to do that in 20 minutes. So on your table, there's these cards. And I want to give everybody here a free book. And uh, it's a gift uh, to the kingdom of God. And uh, you're... Um, fill out that card. You can give it to me. You can give it back to Larry, to Felipe, um, but they'll make sure that I get that. And what I'm going to do is make sure that you get a copy. And if you want a signed copy, mark that on there, whatever you want written. I, I'm going to guarantee it's not going to increase the value of the book. So, um, <laughs> the reason why I'm here tonight as a free man, no longer serving a life sentence, the reason why, not just here at World Connect, but here in Dallas, Texas, is because of a sacrifice that Jesus Christ made 2,000 years ago. In the investment that Larry made in my life over a period of 25 years that remained on my sentence. Just incredible investment. And it's, and, and, and it's, it's, it's my just feel it's a responsibility that wherever I go, that my life is an encouragement that you as leaders invest in people who can't give back. That's who they did. I mean, I want to jump ahead to 1986. I had nine and a half years served in on a life sentence. I heard about a prison revival going on in the chapel. It was called Prison Invasion 1986. And uh, it was a three-day event, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And they allowed close to 100 men to come into the prison throughout the weekend. And they just, they wore badges. They wore, you know, items like this. And they went around and they just witnessed the people. And then they invited the guys from the prison yard, from the blocks, from anywhere they were in the prison. They would invite them to the service that night. And so I was one of those guys, and I remember walking into the chapel 
one of the first times I ever went in nine and a half years to a Christ-centered service. And I remember walking into this prison chapel, and the music was loud. There was, the pews were crammed. There was about 250 men in this chapel. And the music was loud, I said, and, and, and the people were praising and worshiping, and, and, and the, they were testifying. There was Teen Challenge guys there. They were testifying about how God delivered them. And the message that night was Jesus died and rose again. And I sat there. And my, the question I had was, did he do it for me? I believed he did it, but did he do it for me? And at the end of the night, the pastors kept saying, real men make commitments. Real men, they make commitments. And I sat there and I never made a commitment to the Lord in my life. I struggled. I went back to my cell that night without making a commitment, and I went back on Saturday night. And when I was in the chapel again, the music was loud, the worship, people's hands were raised, and just like we were doing here, there was testimonies. The pastor got up, and he gave a message that Jesus died and rose again, and that in him we can have life. And I sat there in that chapel by myself. And again, at the end of the service, he said, real men make commitments. I knew that I never made a commitment to the Lord. When things got tough, I gave up. At the end of the service, there was a, a moment, uh, a time, about 20 minutes worth of fellowship where people just kind of gathered around and talked. And, and I remember standing in the middle of that chapel, 250 men, hugging, clapping, talking, crying, praying. And I didn't want to make eye contact with anybody because when I did, they would come over and say, hey, you made a commitment tonight? And I'm like, no. No, but I know some Christians, you know. I have, a, I have a Bible. I have a Bible in my cell, and I read it when times get tough. And so I was standing there, and I didn't want to make eye contact because it would be like a laser beam coming right over to me. Someone come up behind me and introduced himself, and I turned around, and he said, how are you doing tonight? And I said, good. He said, I'm Larry Titus. And he said, have you made a commitment tonight? And I was like, ah, I can't get away from that. Can't get away from it. And I said, no. I said, let me ask you a question. I said, are you a Christian? He said, yes. And I said, well, how long have you known Jesus? He said, since I was four years old. And I said, you've known Jesus since you were four years old. He says, yes, and I knew God called me to be a missionary at five. Stood there. Life sentenced prisoner without parole. Almost 10 years in the system. My life was a wreck because of drugs, meth. Coke, shooting needles in the cell, getting high, caught up in pornography, just caught up in a, a life of darkness. I went back to my cell with his card. He gave me his card. He said, if you need anything, give me a call. You need some clothes. You need some shoes. You need some money. You need a phone call. You need a visit. Just give me a call. And I'm, I'm thinking, who is this guy? He doesn't know me. He doesn't know that I'm a complete wreck. I went back to my cell. I struggled. I went back Sunday morning, and as I was in the chapel, I walked into a, 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 a crowded chapel full of worship and praise, and, and they were exalting Jesus, and the message was Jesus Christ died. Jesus Christ rose again, and in him you have life. And I just remember it was December 7th, 1986. It was about 1030 in the morning, and I remember it was cold, and I had this big old brown prison coat on. It was corduroy, and it had DOC stamped on the back. And it wasn't Disciple of Christ. It was the Department of Corrections. And I sat in the very last pew of the chapel that night and, I, and, and that morning, and I heard the message, and I was convicted. My stomach was turning. My hands are sweating. And I was thinking, man, I, I, I want to be a Christian. I want to know Jesus. And the guys around me must have saw in my face that look, and they came over and they said, you can do it. Gene, come on, you can do it. You can go up front, and, and come on, you can accept the Lord. And, and I'm telling you, it must have been some angels or something that got me up out of there because I felt like a ton of weight, and I walked up front, and I remember kneeling on the floor, that chapel, on the marble floor, music was playing, and, and I, I just prayed, Jesus, come into my life. Set me free, I want to live for you. Be the Lord of my life. Chains broke off. 
stood up and I felt so light. I mean, I felt different. I knew, I didn't know, I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't know anything about Jesus. The guy said, you have a Bible? He said, go back, read your Bible. I said, okay. He told me like three or four times. So I, I go back to my cell and I'm reading my Bible and, and, and I read it all day. I read it all night. The next morning I get up and I'm reading again and I, I remember the card Larry gave me and I pull it out of my pocket and I wrote him everything. I told him my whole life story. I didn't think this guy would even want to come into prison no more. And, and he said, he wrote me back a week later. He said, put me on your visiting list. I'm going to come see you. And I did. For the next 25 years, Larry would come in every week, every month, every holiday, and every birthday. He never missed. In fact, you did miss my 38th, 37th, 38th birthday because you were in the emergency room having a heart attack. And he told the doctors, I'm going to the prison to visit my son. And the doctor says, no, you're going to surgery. You're not going, you're not going anywhere. But he did make it up, and I tell you, I stand here not too scarred because you missed my birthday. Just incredible. And, and so, oh, my goodness. So when I had 11 years in the prison system, I had an opportunity to file commutation. Commutation is a plea of mercy with the governor. I had no legal right to go back to court. I had no appeal rights, appellate rights. And so with Larry's counsel and his prayers and we... We filed a petition with the governor of Pennsylvania, and I was denied, and it hurt. I went back to my cell, and I knew one thing, that it's good to give God thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in us concerning Christ Jesus. So I got on my knees, and I said, God, thank you for being faithful. I waited another year, and I filed again with 12 years of incarceration, and again, I was denied, and I went back to my cell, and I got on my knees. And I worshiped and I praised God. And I said, God, thank you that you're faithful. When I had 17 years in the prison system, I filed commutation again with support, home plan, jobs. My resume was getting bigger and bigger of accomplishments. And, and, and I went up and they denied me. And again, it hurt. And, and you feel rejection. And I, I ran back to my cell and I got on my knees and I said, God, thank you for being faithful. Thank you that you have my life planned out. I waited again to 24 years. I filed again. 24 years in the prison system. I filed again and I was denied. I didn't tell anybody. I went back to my cell and got on my knees and I said, God, thank you for being sovereign. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you that you love me and you care about me. Thank you that your will is for me right here. When I had 30 years in the prison system, I filed again. I had a resume. I had who's who. Larry had been introducing me from one brother to another. I mean, I, I can't even count the guys. I see, I, see him, I see him today, and I'm like, you came to visit me. Valson Abraham came to visit me in 1987 when he was in India. Larry said, I'm going to bring him into the prison, get him on the visiting list. <laughs> he didn't know he was going to start prison ministry then, but. 30 years, and I went up again, and I waited two and a half years for an answer, 30 months for an answer that usually takes nine months to a year. They called me up, stood before support team, and they said, Gene, the governor denied you. It hurt. I remember thanking everybody and went back to my cell. And as I did, uh, the Holy Spirit said, get on your knees and thank me. And I'm like, okay, that's what, I, that's what I've done all my life is just give God thanks in and, and, and all circumstances, whether good or bad. And so I struggled. I really did. And I, and I just fell on my knees and I put the pillow on my face. And I just cried. My hope of ever getting out of prison just passed before me. I just felt broken. And, and I can I can sense the Lord saying, just open your mouth and say thank you that I'm faithful. And I did. And when I did, I started saying thank you that you provided for me. Thank you that you protected me. Thank you that you promoted me. And when I had just poured out my heart to God, you know, God doesn't have an inferiority complex. You can tell him anything you want. 
And I just poured out my heart. And then when I got quiet, he said, I'm going to release you. And I knew it was the Lord. He said, but not based on your merit, not based on who you know and what you've accomplished. I'm going to release you. And it just, peace came over me. That was incredible the peace of God. And I stood up in my cell and I'm like brushing tears away, snot and everything. And I'm like, wow, I, something just transformed from there to there. And I, and I said, what do I do now, Lord? Lord said, go back to ministry. Go back to getting up in the morning and praying and reading. Go back to work. Go back to witnessing to the gangs. Go back to discipling. Go back to worship. And so I did. I want to skip ahead to April 3rd, 20. 12, April 3rd, 2012, the day I was released from prison. There's, listen, there's, there's a lot of details that I don't even put in, that I can't talk about because of the time, but there, it's in the book. Get that book. It's a relational, it's discipleship. I want to jump ahead, and, and, and I had been released, and, and, I, and, and Larry was on a trip going to Brazil. Praise God for Brazil. He he was going to Brazil. He couldn't be in Pennsylvania, but he had been through the process. For two years, he had been walking through the process with me. And, and I said, get Larry on the phone. So someone dialed. And what, what I want you to listen to is a voicemail that was captured on Larry's cell phone moments after my release. If we can play that. Speaker, right? Yeah, go ahead. It's going to be hard to hear. Yeah, on speaker. Hey, Larry. Hi, this is Bob Meyer. I'm standing next to Gene. The free man, he's on the phone with uh, the Papson, trying to get a hold of you so you can talk to him. Let me see if I can leave a message for you. Larry, Dad, what's up, buddy? I'm out. <laughs> I can't talk. Uh, but, uh, man, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so faithful. Oh, you, you've been so faithful to me over the years. And I... Uh, this is the result of you praying for me. I love you guys. Debbie, I love you. And I can't wait to talk to you in person. If you're there, pick up. I don't know where you're at. I don't know where you're at, but please pick up. I need to hear your voice. And I love you guys. I love you guys. And uh, Rob's here, and Natalie, and Marty, and Veronica, and Marie, and my family, and oh my goodness, Bjorn, and Steve, Sands, and Gail, and, and oh my goodness, it's just amazing. Uh, oh, Larry, I love you so much. And uh, I miss you so much. <laughs> I wish you were here. Oh. I just love you. If you get call me, call me on some cell phone, please. Call me, call me on anybody's cell phone, please. I love you. Bye. You can hear me saying, "Pick up, pick up." My, I've been in prison so long, the only thing I even comprehended was an answer machine in the office. So when I called, they, you know, you can hear someone. So I kept saying, pick up Larry. I figured he was somewhere, as you know. And I, didn't, I had no concept of a cell phone. I never saw a cell phone. I never used one. In fact, that's when they handed me the cell phone, I, I, I was like, I can't hear anything. They had to come over and they turned it around. And it was upside down. Welcome, welcome to society. I... Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just my desire to encourage us as leaders to invest in those people that can't give back. Because you'll never know. You just never know who they're going to be or where they might be standing someday. I just love Larry. Larry, come on. I just want to say thank you so much. Again, fill those cards up. I want, I want to put that book in your hands. It's been an incredible uh, process, and I just, I just love you guys. I love being.